All right, guys. I hope um, everybody had a great break. Uh, summer, spring semester. Uh, I hope everybody had a great break, and uh, uh, we are here uh, in the managerial accounting class for this semester. And I'm the professor, as you can see. And uh, I will be teaching all the concepts uh, with eight chapters uh, throughout the semester. So we are at the first chapter. This is the first chapter. And um, what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about uh, the introduction to managerial accounting. We are going to discuss uh, the concepts in managerial accounting. We are going to talk about a whole bunch of different stuff tied to managerial accounting. And we are going to do comparison between managerial accounting and uh, financial accounting. And then uh, uh, <coughs> we, will t we will do the small recap. We will do the small recap uh, about business types and ethics and what we have in uh, managerial accounting in a broader sense. So uh, I would like to tell you a couple of things before we start. Uh, first thing is, you're going to see on my right, your left, I believe, uh, right here, you're going to see right here that this is my lecture notes, and you can follow the lecture notes as I am teaching, okay? Uh, you will see the black background and the white, um, uh, white color for the, for the sentences, for the paragraphs. However, in your lecture notes are printed on a white page, okay? It is just the color adjustment that I had to do over here before I lecture. All right, guys. <coughs> let me give, let me give you a brief um, brief um, dynamics and, and uh, uh, let me give you brief characteristics of uh, my lecture notes, guys. My lecture notes starts with the lecture outline. Okay, as you can see right here, uh, you will see on your right side it starts with the lecture outline. So you can see what I'm going to talk about today. For example, we're going to start with. Uh, uh, the managerial accounting concepts. We can understand what it is. And then we're going to switch our attention to operational nature of uh, hospitality industry, what we have in the hospitality industry, the characteristics of operational and financial characteristics of the uh, hospitality industry. Okay, And then we will talk about uh, branches of accounting, ethics, business types, and we will be done with this chapter. Okay. As I said before, uh, before as I said before, uh, the very first page of every single uh, chapter is the lecture notes and the lecture out, uh, lecture outline. Sorry, and then you will get to <coughs> you will get to follow the lecture uh, uh, using the outline, and then if you're lost for some reason, you can always go back and uh, see where we were. Okay, so guys, let's discuss what is managerial accounting. What do you think? Think about it a little bit. Just try to create your own words, okay, and then come up with your own definition, guys. Managerial accounting, okay, is a tool. Managerial accounting is a concept. Managerial accounting is a series of analysis, tool, concept, whatever you name it, to come up with a decision-making process, to come up with a healthy financial decision using different concepts. Therefore, Managerial accounting is a tool. Um, this is the book definition, by the way. Managerial accounting is a tool that uh, you, uh, helps managers to lay out, to structure great financial decision-making process uh, based on uh, the concepts <coughs> in managerial accounting. Okay, you can see over here. I'm just going to underline it. Okay, this is the. Book definition of managerial accounting, right? Therefore, the main, the main role of managerial accounting is to assess the internal performance of the companies, of the hospitality companies, hotels, restaurants, cruise lines, event management, you name it. Okay, guys, managerial accounting differs from financial uh, financial accounting in many ways. But I'm going to show you something over here, and uh, let me just clear this board <coughs> so you can see it easily. All right, so managerial accounting differs from financial accounting in many ways. First of all, and this is the, the and this, let me just uh, uh, put the bullet points over here. It observes managerial accounting. It observes uh, financial, it observes the data from the financial accounting concepts, okay, and then process the data. I will talk about what, they, what kind of data we are talking about right now. Uh, process the data and have the end product put the end product on the table for decision making process. Picture this. Forget about the hospitality industry. Forget about the um, uh, uh, hotels, restaurants, operations, and all that. Right? Think about the pizza, pizza store. Okay? Financial accounting gets the pizza dough, put the pizza sauce on it, okay? and you know, some cheese or some different, with different crusts. 
and put the toppings on the pizza. For example, pepperoni, green peppers, I don't know, olives, you name it. I make him a little hungry. Uh, <laughs> uh, you name it, okay? So financial accounting okay, prepares the pizza from the scratch and puts into the oven and then, uh, uh, you know, wait for 20, 25 minutes, uh, and then we have the end product. There. So end product is the financial statements. Remember what you had in financial accounting courses. We had you had debits and credits. You have adjusted accounts. You have some other some other adjustments such as journal entries, general journal, and all that, right? And then uh, you prepare, you close all the accounts, and then you prepare financial statements. Man the role of managerial accounting starts with the uh, financial statements. Therefore, managerial accounting becomes a process of using, using the end product of financial accounting, which is the financial, which are the financial statements, right? And analyze the components of each and every single financial statement to come up with a robust decision-making process, to come up with a solid internal operational performance analysis. Okay, guys? You can read it over here. Excuse me. Uh, managerial accounting observed financial events down within the uh, last two years. It shows operational performance, such as how much cash the firm has, how much, li how much liabilities we have, what are the expenses, the cost structure, the asset structure, revenue streams, profit margins, and all that. It provides specialized internal, uh, internal information as well. Guys, inter when I say internal, infor internal information, please, please, please understand that I'm talking about the internal performance assessment. Therefore, I will repeat myself one more time, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this again. Uh, managerial accounting is the process of internal operational analysis. Internal financial analysis. Combination of all these two becomes a managerial accounting. Okay? Uh, <coughs> operational nature of the hospitality industry. Guys, we have a lot of uh, dynamics, features, characteristics in the hospitality industries. It is different when we analyze the subsectors. For example, uh, it is you know operational analysis is uh, different between uh, is different between, sorry uh, is different between the restaurants and the and the and the, um, and the hotel operations. Right? Or the operational analysis is different between restaurants versus cruise lines, event companies versus, <coughs> let's say, uh, casinos, right? But the thing is, but the thing is, uh, the um, operational characteristics uh, of hospitality industry is unique for every single, every single sub-sector, okay? What do I mean by saying that? Well, we have production and consumption at the same time, okay? And um, let me just scroll down a little bit, hang on. Okay. We have production and cons consumption happens at the same time, okay? This is the unique characteristics. This tells us that <coughs> hospitality companies, regardless of restaurants, hotels, cruise lines, or casinos, we have short distribution chain and time span. What is it? What I mean by saying short distribution chain, guys, short distribution chain is the length of time between the production and the consumption. And it is so short in the hospitality industry because production and cons consumption, as I said before, production and consumption happen at the same time. Okay. Imagine the housekeeping turn down service. The industry norms for the housekeeping turn down service is between 12 minutes to 15 minutes. Therefore, well, 12 minutes ago, let's say 40 minutes ago, just to, just to be less realistic a little bit, 40 minutes ago, uh, any standard room, imagine that, it wasn't ready, the room was not ready. But now, after 14 minutes, after the turn down service, based on the industry standards and or company standards, uh, 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 the room is produced again for sale, right? And that is exactly why we have the short distribution chain. That's exactly what it is, guys. Time span, okay? Time span. Well, picture this. Picture the length of time that the construction company spent to build a building. Build any real estate building, actually, okay? Skyscraper, from skyscrapers to just single family houses, okay? I know that's a very <laughs> uh, different example, but I, when I make the comparison, it will make much more sense. How long does it take for any construction company to build a building? 
a year and a half maybe, 18 months, 10 months, 5 months, 6 months, we don't know, depends on the size, depends on uh, the, the type of the real estate. So, the time span of the hospitality companies or time span of the hospitality products are so short again versus um, the products in the construction industry, all right? Therefore, we have the time span. We have the we have the short time span. Time span is the is the length of time that uh, we pro we produce uh, uh, the product again, along with the sort of short distribution chain. For example, baking a cake in FMB uh, FMB outlets, or I don't know, uh, cooking any food in cooking any food in the main kitchen. All right. Um, distribution distribution chain. Um, another example I would like to give, and then I will switch to the other important uh, characteristics. Guys, distribution chain is the sales of the product itself. Imagine the room, room sales for example. Room sales, uh, what we have, uh, we have the uh, you know, uh, front office in the hotel if you're a walking, you know, if, if, if you're a walking customer, uh, we are, uh, we have the front office, uh, front office and then we do check-ins and check-outs and the time, time length of, those pro of the process is around 10, 10 minutes on average, okay? Uh, of course, there are cases that it takes long. Or imagine yourself and try to book in a book a room in any hotel using the online online travel agencies or TAs, Expedia, Kayak, Priceline, uh, Orbit, for example. Okay. So anyway, uh, bottom line: uh, short distribution chain of the hospitality products, uh, along with the time time spent on distributing those products in the hospitality industry is extremely short versus other industries such as construction industry okay very good um, this is let me just scroll over here clean the top part so I don't get confused all right human capital human capital is another important characteristics because human capital guys hospitality industry extremely depends on the human capital people actual workforce we are the people's industry we need people to serve people therefore there is a tremendous labor tremendous human capital both for the back offices and the, in the field for the operation uh, human capital is, is extremely needed for to run the operation smoothly to fully fully run the operations okay any hospitality operation a need of acquiring fixed assets hmm. think about it what are fixed assets Land, building, chairs, computers, company cars, uh, bed sheets, kitchen equipment, these are all the fixed assets. Hospitality companies, the, uh, this, is one of the, this is one of the most important actually, um, operational financial characteristics of the hospitality companies because hospitality companies need to acquire fixed assets to grow. Imagine Google. Google doesn't need to as a company. Google doesn't need to buy a whole bunch of different properties and put the products in because their products are up in iClouds or in the servers. But on the other hand, on the other hand, in hospitality industries, we have to put the physical products in a physical place. Building, hotel buildings, uh, spa and wellness center, pool areas, convention areas, conference areas event areas or any restaurants in the hotel, any standalone restaurants. Therefore, there is a tremendous need uh, for acquiring fixed assets for, to, um, for, for, for a growth purposes, for a bigger and better market share purposes. Therefore, uh, a need for acquiring fixed assets uh, is extremely import important. Guys, accounting function in the hospitality industry we all know what it is I'm just gonna write it over here I'm gonna talk about it, okay we all know what it is because you guys just took a financial accounting and then you guys should be familiar with this simple very simple yet complicated uh, equation uh, accounting information this one right here is applicable for every single company every single industry in the world okay not just at home here but every single company in the world, total assets must be, I'm not saying should be, I'm not saying maybe, must be equal to total liabilities plus total equity, all right? So total assets, what we have, take a look. Um, I'm gonna, it's, it's gonna come later, sorry. Total assets, we're gonna analyze this later, okay? But let's talk about the, uh, uh, what's inside in this accounting function. Okay, we have total assets, total liabilities, and total equity. 
But guys, as I said, there are gazillion, gazillion type of different accounting procedures, branches. There are million types of different, different accounting procedures uh, are under all these categories, okay? And then, uh, uh, you know, when we, when we compile, when we combine every single little tiny bit processes in the accounting world, it comes to this big equation, right? Uh, under GAAEAP, GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, uh, every single company, including hospitality companies, uh, <coughs> every single company has to follow some certain procedures, some certain accounting principles, and some certain uh, processes. So under GAAP, uh, we have different accounting principles that fits in this big equation. I will show you in a second right now that fits in the big uh, uh, this big equation. I say big equation. It is so simple yet complicated, but it means a lot. It means big for accounting operations cost, for example. Okay, When transaction is recorded, we are here right now, when transaction is recorded, um, uh, uh, the transaction price has to be listed, has to be written uh, in the equations, in the accounting equations. Okay, Business entity, guys. Uh, business entity tells us that each business has its own entity. Therefore, the owners of the businesses cannot be mixed with the uh, business operations. For example, businesses have buildings, businesses have lands, business, businesses have different types of assets, fixed assets, current assets. Uh, therefore, owners cannot, owners slash shareholders cannot claim those assets and then cannot use all those assets on behalf of their benefit. That's exactly what business entity is, okay? Uh, going concern, business continuity, they are the same thing. Uh, going concern, it is assumed in accounting world, it is assumed in accounting world that uh, businesses will go forever, okay? What, I'm, what do I mean by saying that? They will live forever, they will continue to operate forever. It's not the case in real life, I know that businesses go bankrupt sometimes, okay? But just on the books, on the court listings, on the uh, uh, businesses rec business recording, in, um, in official branches of government, state, local, or uh, federal government, businesses are assumed to continue to operate, are assumed to operate uh, forever, okay? Unit of measurement, unit of measurement has to be a numerical value. They, has, they have to be, you know, uh, the unit of measurement has to be uh, and ex, you know, it has to be a monetary, has to become with monetary value in in terms of we are using U.S. dollars. Okay, it could be different in any European country, in or Asian country, or Latin American country. But here in the U.S., it's U.S. dollar. Everything everything you have to do has to be based on U.S. dollars. Objective evidence. Um, you have to be object, objective. You have to disclose every single thing that you do as a company, from community activities to charity activities to social responsible uh, uh, activities or events and all that, or uh, your accounting procedures. Okay, it has to be disclosed uh, with the evidence. That's exactly what it is. Therefore, uh, full closure. Full closure right here is important uh, because in the full closure. Uh, when we do the full closure, okay, as one of the GAP principles, when we do the full closure, companies have to talk about all these in a logical way, okay, uh, in their full closure reports. Well, guys, let me tell you something. Uh, there is something called 10K report, okay, and uh, every single full closure, every single uh, evidence, every single activity reporting has to be piled has to be written, has to be documented in the 10K report, okay? So, uh, uh, most of the companies are publicly operated corporations and the 10K reports are out there and 10K reports include every single operational procedures and fully disclosed with the evidence uh, in that report, okay? Consistency, guys, consistency, it's important. Uh, companies uh, have to be consistent. What do I mean by saying that? They have to be consistent in their accounting procedures, for example. Let me just give you a, a, a great example over here. Uh, if any hospitality company starts with uh, a specific de depreciation calculation, that company has to follow that specific calculation forever, unless it is notified. Okay, unless the company notifies the government that they are changing it, because uh, different, for example, for this is an example, for example, uh, different like, different depreciation uh, procedures have different implications, such as different tax implications, different um, different. 
profit and revenue implications that's why uh, whatever you're doing uh, you cannot change it in the middle of the year you have to follow the procedure such as depreciation revenue calculation uh, HR practices you name it you have to follow it and you have to finish the fiscal year one full year with that procedure okay Another important principle we have is the matching principle over here. Uh, this is all about expenses and revenues, guys. Matching principle, uh, expenses and revenues, they have to be recorded on accrual base. Accrual basis, sorry, let me just, I didn't make it clear. Accrual basis meaning um, revenues have, the revenues have to be recognized when the actual money is earned. Think about the accounts receivable. Uh, you know, hospitality operations, hospitality companies, they do have accounting receivable, accounts receivables, right? Which, which they have the, they have uh, amount of money to be paid to them sometime in the future, okay? Therefore, let's imagine that as I am the business right here, I'm the hospitality company. If somebody owes me $500, okay, and if that person, if that vendor, if that third party, if that supplier tells me that he or she or that supplier is going to, is going to pay me a week later, I should be recording that uh, earnings as a revenue in a week, okay, a week later as $500. Why? Uh, because of the accrual basis, uh, a recognition of uh, revenues and expenses, they have to be done when that specific revenue and or expense happen, occur. Okay, guys? Um, <clears throat> we are not using cash basis anymore, okay? We are not doing this, but our accounting principles uh, under GAAP, it is all based on the accrual basis. So that's what we are going to use, guys, okay? This is one of the very important matching principle. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, this is one of the important principle uh, in that big accounting equation we have right here, guys. Okay? Conservatism, uh, just to be safe, just to respect to the community and the, re the world resources, uh, companies are expected to be uh, conservative. Why? Because uh, there is, you know, respect to earth uh, that shouldn't companies should not be using extravagant uh, spending or or extravagant activities on using resources and of course uh, that brings respect to the competitors uh, competitors as well in the industry right uh, materiality principle this is mostly for the fixed cost right here guys uh, i will tell you um, this is important if any tangible asset okay is acquired and lives beyond one year okay uh, that's commonly recorded as the fixed cost over here fixed assets for example um, we have type of assets which are called current assets their life is less than a year their useful life is less than a year however fixed assets right here their useful life is more than a year okay so the materiality principle talks about this differentiation and then uh, it tells us what can be the current assets what can be the fixed assets by the way you should be you should be you should remember uh, current assets and the fixed assets from your from your financial accounting courses so guys as I said okay we have the GAAP principles we have the accounting principles and all these principles that we have been talking for the past uh, uh, seven to ten minutes uh, falls under this big 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 equation simple yet complicated but big equation I call big because everything is in there every single accounting procedure based on accounting principles is in there therefore take a look at this we analyze what the companies own okay assets over here for example Assets decomposition over here, different types of assets. We have the liabilities, we have payments, we have long loan payments, we have repayments of any mortgage loan, for example. We have expenses, we have current liabilities, we have short-term liabilities, we have long-term liabilities. We are all liable of this equity. Equity is the, what company has or the capital that the company raised from the competitors. The, the explanations are over here for each category, guys. And of course, you know, this is the main equation. This is just for the reminder purposes. So. Uh, again, uh, everything goes hand in hand. All the accounting principles, accounting procedures are, you know, in this big uh, <coughs> or uh, com very simple, complicated uh, equation. Okay. 
we have different branches of accounting. We have different branches of accounting. By the way, let me tell you this. Uh, I cannot physically <laughs> have a break over here, but um, if, uh, if you think that uh, you need a break, you can always stop the video and then take a break. I don't have to say it, but you know, uh, by saying this, I actually take a break and then clean, <laughs> clean the screen uh, for your convenience. Guys, branches of accounting, we have different accounting branches. For example, financial accounting. We talked about this. Financial accounting deals with the past occurrences, such as bills, invoice, receipts, uh, you name it, and then process those bills, okay, put in, in a logical flow. Therefore, they can prepare financial accounting people or accounting people that deals with the financial accounting side can prepare the financial statements for decision making purposes. That's why managerial accounting comes into play when we talk about decision making process. Why? Because managerial accounting is the, uh, is, the, is the combination of tools that utilize financial accounting. Financial accounting are the combination of, financial accounting is the combination of tools that utilize financial accounting to come up with decision making process, to come up with correct, accurate, solid and robust internal performance assessment, okay? Profit margins to revenues, cost allocation structure to break-even analysis, so from variance analysis, different difference analysis, to so budgeting, operating, discounting, pricing, and all that. We are going to talk about all this in this semester uh, that all falls under uh, managerial accounting. Cost accounting, as you can see, as you can tell by its name, cost accounting only deals with the cost structure of the operations. Okay, just like tax accounting right here. Tax accounting deals with tax only, and it doesn't touch or uh, anything else. It just deals with or calculate tax payables or tax refunds for the company or uh, any other tax issues. Okay, guys, very good so far. Auditing, auditing is one of the important accounting branch as well because in auditing um, <coughs> companies, uh, let me just back up a little bit and then talk about auditing. In auditing, uh, companies have to prepare their 10K reports. As we talked about this, companies they prepare, they have to prepare uh, their financial statements. They have to do that. Companies have to prepare other uh, tiny little EDB the financial statements and or reports to submit them to the federal government and or state local government okay companies are most of the companies do auditing because uh, uh, it helps them it helps them to prepare a correct financial statement it helps them to prepare an accurate reporting system uh, sometimes they hire they outsource the, the companies such as Pricewater Cooper House or Fitch, S&P 500 may, maybe, and then they come, they audit the company, they check, check the financials, they control every single accounting procedures and transactions, and then uh, they come up with their, uh, uh, you know, outcome that everything is fine uh, for the report, so they can submit it. They do this every single year, okay? Cash versus accrual accounting, we talked about this. It is the, uh, it is different accrual, accrual basis accounting right here, accrual basis recording, cash basis recording right here. We talked about this. Revenues and expenses, they have to re record it at the, when, at the same time. Uh, they are realized, okay? And accrual, accrual basis accounting is the one we are using and we don't use cash basis accounting anymore. Okay, guys? So this was the different accounting branches now, uh, let's just talk about uh, business types, and then this will be, uh, uh, this will be I think, uh, the uh, last part of our, our lecture <coughs> today, for this week in terms of chapter, five, chapter 1. Guys, let me remind you this before I talk about this. You know uh, this chapter is just the introductory chapter, and this is the only chapter that you will have as the conceptual chapter uh, uh, in this semester. Uh, I intended to recap financial accounting very fast in this chapter so we know what we learned, we remembered, recalled what we learned in 2401 uh, financial accounting class and then now we can just take it from there and then advance the logic, advance the topic, advance our skills to the next level. Okay guys? Business types we have over here, we have different, different business types. Uh, you have to excuse me this, I cannot pronounce this one. So I'm going to go with P, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sole P, uh, only one owner, uh, easy to open a company, easy to um, 
deal with the liabilities because it's the one owner uh, but there's a, there are difficulties in raising capital uh, there are difficulties in finding additional money to grow the business uh, but again uh, we have as an advantage not deductibility of benefits uh, there's a single taxation so we have advantages and disadvantages are mixed in the sole P okay uh, most of the startups by the way if you are planning to have your own startup in the hospitality industry most of the startups start with the sole piece structure and then gets bigger and bigger uh, as they become successful in the future okay partnership guys partnership we have different partnership uh, structure but in the partnership we have uh, two or more people get together form a business there's a written agreement uh, uh, across the part uh, across the part across the partners that sets the um, the responsibility of each partner for the liabilities and the revenue for example uh, if i have my friend or uh, somebody else next to me if i decide to form a business with him or her uh, if i put 40 percent of what we need to form a business and if she or he put 60 percent of what we need my responsibility revenue and liability responsibility will be 40 percent and hers will be 60 percent that's exactly what it is that's why i just circled this little bit it's important characteristics that's exactly what it is unlimited liability legal liability therefore unsurable risk of business uninsurable risk of business it becomes a risky business as a partnership because uh, it's just that means company is still in the infant stage infancy stage still growing which brings the business and financial risk uh, to the company's operation guys all right <coughs> we have limited partnership speaking of partnership lp guys limited partnership the one of the most uh, disadvantage that i can tell to you is non-tax advantages okay uh, non-tax advantages it is a tax advantage of limited partners investments okay uh, uh, so this is important right here well unlike general partners this is this become uh, this is very important as well unlike general partners limited partners have limited liability as you can tell by its name anyways limited partnership partners have limited liability they have limited responsibilities okay but again the investments and the you know fur further procedures since they are limited they get the limited share from the benefits when i say benefits uh, in this term um, profit margins profit uh, the pocket money of the company is probably the best example uh, to give that uh, we have also llc's guys llc's uh, are again easy to form this type of business entity is relatively new it's easy to form you can you can partner with somebody uh, you can be by yourself it's flexible actually okay um, uh, uh, I have seen LLCs uh, created as associates, as passive and active partners. Even though it says LLC can have a single can have a single owner, it can also have multiple owners. Okay, uh, it's new, relatively new. Well, I don't want to say new, but it's still uh, you know it's at the mature stage actually. It's uh, you know uh, it's very easy to form uh, LLC business. I think within uh, two or three weeks, every single uh, every single dimension of the business is done okay corporations guys corporations are the most complex uh, 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 business entities because they have they can have million shareholders shareholders are the owners who owns the the shares of the company who dictates tells the agents such as CEO CIO to what to do in the business to you know how to derive how to create the future uh, of the businesses of the companies right all right guys political authority, sorry uh, political authority okay uh, you have to go through state uh, to get you know to form uh, uh, a corporation you know by filling all the legal legal forms and all that uh, it has to have an exclusive name for example in our industrial let's say Marriott International you cannot put your you can put your last name in it all that but it has to be exclusive anyways um, there is <coughs> um, owners are double text by the way okay I don't I'm sorry double text well corporate sorry let me just back up corporations pay double tax but owners are tax on distributed profits such as dividends uh, or capital gains you will talk about all these in 44 64 financial management uh, but I'm just gonna give you a heads up it is uh, easy to raise capital uh, because corporations, most of the corporations are public companies, publicly operated companies, publicly owned companies. Um, publicly owned company means that some of the share, I mean, a portion of the company can be put in financial markets 
for public to buy shares, therefore they become shareholders. Of course there are rules. Uh, they become shareholders so they can, uh, they can have uh, the shares in the company. That's why it is easy to raise capital for corporations. Corporations are complex in terms of size and different in terms of size, asset, price, business lines. Double taxation, as I said before, double taxation over here, most important uh, disadvantage uh, because they are taxed twice, the corporate profits are taxed twice, uh, but uh, corporations have uh, a lot of room to grow businesses. Uh, let me just give you a brief example, Marriott International. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is the is the is the market leader, uh, or from other industries, uh, you know, Apple. <coughs> uh, everybody knows uh, the company. Apple is a trillion dollar company. Therefore, uh, with the shareholders uh, and the market market and with the shareholders, market value of the company grows and grows. So corporations have this advantage, uh, this this type of advantage. Uh, uh, in the industry. Okay. S corporations, S corporations, no double taxation, different type of corpor corporation. I would say S corporation is a type of corporation. Advantages and disadvantages are slightly the same, but there, there are major uh, differences between S corps and the corporations. All right? uh, well, sometimes corporations uh, cannot position themselves where they want to be in the business, in the market, therefore they might convert themselves to S corporation because uh, uh, it's easy for them to avoid this way, it's easy for them to avoid double taxation. That's why uh, they sometimes convert themselves uh, uh, S corps. If the company uh, start having losses and if in the near future if the company thinks that they might go bankrupt, at least liquidate, liquidate their assets uh, or uh, you know uh, until the debt restructure, uh, they might just convert themselves to S corps uh, to avoid double taxation. At least they can just use that money to pay to repay the outstanding amount of loans that they have. Okay, guys. So <coughs> we have one more thing, and then uh, it will be done for today. Um, uh, this is the cor this is the different business types we have, guys. And in the hospitality industry, of course, we do have different business types. We have franchise companies, corporations. We have <coughs> partnerships that operate and manage the companies. But the the fixed asset, which is the build the company building, is you know belongs to some other <coughs> excuse me <coughs> some other company. So we have different types of uh, uh, business types and layout. In hospitality industry. Uh, before we go, uh, before we are done for today, for this chapter, for this week, uh, ethics and accounting, uh, take a look at this guys right here. As you are the business owner, as you are the director, as you are the hotel manager, as you are the restaurant owner, as you are the cruise line director, director of operations, whatever you do, okay, uh, you have to think about if you're offending anybody, if your methods are applicable under GAP rules if you are following the right directions uh, for decision making process if you're if you're you know are if you are following uh, the legal hiring process so these are uh, the, these are the stuff that uh, uh, ethics comes into play in managerial accounting uh, since there is a lot there are a lot of decision making process that you have to do under managerial accounting under the management okay uh, in the operations, <coughs> um, ethical issues um, becomes ethical issues become very important uh, because of that decision that uh, everybody has to make. <coughs> so um, uh, ethics are important in managerial accounting. <coughs> Excuse me, ethics are important in managerial accounting uh, because it is also uh, indicated by the by the federal government that. In order to be responsible to the corporate, uh, corporate industry, corporate America, in order to be respectful to the corporate America, communities and the other businesses and the market itself, okay, <clears throat> uh, being fair, being ethical uh, is critical in your decision making process. When I say your, you as the director, you as the manager, you as the owner or the shareholder or any stakeholder, okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, I talk too much again. I know uh, I sometimes talk too fast, and sometimes I don't make sense. So uh, please excuse me if I don't uh, uh, make sense or say the stuff that I want to say in a correct way. 
Uh, I will try to talk slow in uh, upcoming videos and for the next chapter. Um, uh, there's one quiz for the uh, there's there's only one quiz for the chapter one. Uh, you know what it is. You are notified by email or me in person in the classroom. Uh, so uh, please make sure you follow the um, chapter guidelines. And, uh, check lecture lecture outline. Uh, please make sure you follow the course guidelines and schedule. So if you have any questions, please shoot me an email. Come find me in my office, room 254. Or uh, you can always uh, catch me after the class if this is a mixed mode class. Okay, guys? Well, thanks so much for your patience. And I will see you guys next week with Chapter 2, which is the cost structure and cost allocation. Thank you.